a live RC Groups broadcast. This is uh, not the first time we've done this, but uh, this is a uh, third attempt. And with us, we have Matt Gunn and Jason Cole. What's up, guys? Hey, what's going on? All right, so we've put a link out on RC Groups, and I'm working on something else. You know what I think I might also do is I've got a couple of more ideas to let people know we're going live. And while we're doing that, Jason Cole, what's going on? Uh, so, good news, fellas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It better I be. I just got back from the body shop, and my, new, my car has been repaired from <laughs> uh, Alex Greaves, Ivy Crazy's, you know, incident at the FPV race. So uh, Why don't we re, uh, restate that incident, <laughs> since you now are uh, a real statistic. Yeah. So, what do you want me to restate? What happened to you? Oh, what happened? So I was parked at the uh, Stumble Airlines uh, FPV event last year, last fall, and uh, there was some racing going on and quads and wings and all kinds of stuff, and we were having fun, and I was parked up next to a camper uh, so I could access you know, near my flight tent, and I'm walking up and down the event. We're talking to people, and then somebody says, hey, was that your gray car over there by that camper? And I'm like, yeah, why? And they're like... Uh, somebody just hit it, and I was like, no, nah. like, I was in a place where it should not have gotten hit, I was like, you're crazy, and he's like, no, nah, go check out your hood, and so I walk over, and I look at the hood, and sure enough, man, it was scratched the heck, and I was oh. like, what happened, and I was like, do we, like, do we know who did it, and they said, yeah, Alex did it, he's been looking for the owner, you know, the king like, of the, of the beam antennas, I'd be crazy, <laughs> so yeah, so somebody turned on his channel, and uh, he got blanketed out video and couldn't see and ended up, he was coming around the right angle in the curve and then it shot it right towards my car. And, uh, you know, he killed the throttle and all that stuff. But it had enough momentum um, that it damaged the car pretty good. And, and so all I saw was the hood. And then and then uh, I go back later and I'm kind of talking and I come and show Alex and we talk about it. And he's going to take care of it. It's no problem. And, uh, and then I see the roof at the rear. So apparently it hit the roof first, uh, where the hatchback cover is, and then the roof, and it dented. I mean, it almost went through. You could see bare metal. It was that hard mm, hit. That's so brutal. So it bounced off the roof, and then hit the hood. So it got it twice. So, and, uh, it took a while for you. Now, uh, you drive a Z28 Camaro with side pipes, don't you? No, I thought you had a Corvette. <laughs> I think he drives a... Um, it, it's sort of Mad Max. What are you driving in, Jason? Oh, it's just a Toyota RAV4. I work in the RC industry, so... <laughs> 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 but uh, so it took a while for the insurance money to come in and then there was never just a good time to, to take it to the shop so I finally did it they said it was going to be two weeks it was done in a week so I just picked it up and made it back in time to hit this so I'll be able to go to the field tomorrow with my own car Nice. and I'm excited about that so that's good news and we took that car to Habico and Horizon. We went to lovely Champaign, Illinois. And you know what? It was actually pretty lovely. We had some uh, – it wasn't three degrees. Man, it could have been a whole lot worse. I was excited. We did not freeze our butts off. And uh, we got to hang out, and we got to see some stuff. And some stuff we couldn't talk about, but some stuff we mm -hmm. can. Um, one thing I didn't actually get my hands on that came out yesterday was the new DX20. Oh man, Ooh, what a beautiful yeah, thing looks transmitter! Awesome. And I'm a DX18 guy, so uh, I'm really upset I didn't have my hands on the actual. <laughs> it might not have been there. I don't even know how many physical units there are of this thing. I it think just they goes hit to show it, you how secretive they actually are right. about new products because they one didn't th tell us about it when we were there. One thing we did get our hands on, and you can look for a story on this. This is a new uh, micro cam 5.8 coming out from Horizon, mm -hmm. and uh, the beautiful thing, and you know what, I'm going to save this, look at it, wonder about it, now, we'll bring it back up <laughs> in a minute, I'm going to save it for uh, Mac Gunn, he's going to talk about some stuff, mm -hmm. but uh, before we go there, I have a rumor that I've been okay to share without talking about it. Boom, what is it? I'm going to try to say as little as possible. I know what you're going to say, I think I do. It's let's first of all let's say it's for FPV. It's a unit, and it's a unit for smaller FPV craft that we all have wanted. And the last part of the hint I'm going to give is that it's uh, from a company called Eagle Tree. Boom. Oh. 
That's all I can say. That's it, huh? This That's is it right here. Just kidding. Yeah. Here it is. It's, uh, it's so little. <laughs> No, it's, it's true. It's happening. Uh, we don't have our hands on one yet, but we will have uh, some units to review. And I, I was like, "When does this? When do you invent this?" And they're like, "Well, we're actually uh, almost done. <laughs> pretty cool." If you know what I'm talking about, you know. And like my old friend R.I.P. Bubba Spivey said, "If you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. But when you do, you will." <laughs> wow, Bubba. That took Bubba like an hour and 28 beers <laughs> to get that out of his pie hole. That's some good words right there. And then I, we almost got arrested by two police. <laughs> oh, I know that story. The Toledo trade show. <laughs> That's right. When's that going to be on a podcast? Yeah, we should tell that story. It makes no sense, but neither did the hour and a half I spent with Bubba at the bar. He just sung like this. I didn't even really know Bubba. He just took me off the elevator, put his arm around me. He had a good-looking white hair fella just whopped me right in the bar. I, I, it's the first time I was ever at Toledo, and he just kept buying me more. I mean, beer. That sounds like wow. close to how you say your grandmother sounds. No, it's Bubba Spivey. If you know Bubba Spivey, you know how he talks. And if you don't, well, you won't, but you might. And if you do, then you will. Old Bubba. That's not the whole story. But, uh, wow. You know Bubba's 5 you right, Jason? Yeah. I, I do. I do. I do. All right. Okay, just I want to stop here for a minute. New technology. We are definitely broadcasting. We are definitely live. Our logos are not showing up. Oh, I meant to take the shirt off to wear the... Uh-oh. Shirt. But uh, it looks like everything's working the way it should. Yeah. And what we're going to try to do... For those who are listening or will be, <laughs> thank you. ladies and gentlemen, Jim T. Graham, bam, or will be listening, <laughs> is uh, we're gonna try to do this every week, the same time. Dang, damn it, taking a shirt off and talking. I've done it before. Um, every week, the same time. I think Thursday's the day because you're almost through the week. It's not Friday. And uh, we're going to try this time, 1 o'clock. We might move it to 2. I actually meant to do it at 2 today. I'm not sure how I landed on 1. But every week we want to do it at the same time, same day, and then you'll know it'll be, hey, I can hang out with the guys. And what oh, yeah. we do is we are always doing the news, reviews, event coverage, talking to people on the phone, answering emails. So there's all kinds of RC information we have, and uh, we're just going to share it with you each week. And we've got the, uh, if you log in to, is it through Google that you get the chat box, you can ask questions, there's a Q&A section, um, so you, it can be interactive, so we, we want to hear from the viewers and, and everybody out there, if they have any questions for us or want to talk about something in particular, then that's available as well. I have a secondary computer over here where I usually run real flight, and I'm trying to watch our feed on that computer. <laughs> But I have to create an account, and I'm sure if I did that, it would knock me off this. So I'm not going to do that. But, uh, okay, awesome. So now we've uh, – I just got news, guys. This is live, of course. This is kind of weird because we're used to doing this podcast as a recording, and then we go back and we edit and we upload and all that. And so it's very – it's kind of hard on my brain that we're – this is live. See, yeah, like, I'll take wonder. It's like I'm at a stadium now, and I can't talk. Anyway, Brad, uh, one of the RC Group's lab guys, said that the notice just went live on RC Group's. So I'm going to go look at that, and that should be telling people on RC Group's that, hey, uh, we're live. You should come join us here. But uh, Matt Gunn, tell them the awesomeness that you're doing right now. Matt. Matt. Matt, oh, Matt's awesome. gone. Oh. Matt is gone, folks. Okay. I'm going to tell you the awesomeness while Matt logs back on. <laughs> um, as you know, the FAA, Jason, should I say what I feel or should I just uh, skip right over it? The FAA has mandated Speak it. some things in a manner that I can only use a descriptive term as a uh, debacle. But what wait, wait Jim, let, let me sum up your feelings in one sound my arms effect. Are crossed. I'm really, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not going to go into great detail about this. I'm just going to say it would be awesome if you were going to create laws and rules and regulations that you knew what you're talking about. That's really what <laughs> I'm, I've been mad for two days. You would think that would be a prerequisite, right? 
I'm not going to go there. I'll go there later when I have to go there. I'm really not happy. Uh, Matt's not back yet. But what we've did is I said, look, guys, uh, I know that we don't have to stay under the limit. But what if, what if we could stay under the limit? What if we stayed under the F, F, A, the FFA limit? That'd be a cattle problem. But the, <laughs> what if we stayed under the FAA limit and then we flew these craft and we didn't have to register them? That would be awesome. Mm-hmm. So Except uh, that you would only have to fly those aircraft and nothing else. But exactly. if you want to do that, we've got solutions for you, right? That's how my brain works anyway. You know, I stick, I get on one thing and that's it for a whole season usually. Yeah. So, um, Matt Gunn, who I'm going to send this link to him again. Um, and I were talking and I said, I want a wing because I'm really liking my, uh, winged craft. And so we found one on ready made RC. And so my plan was in the spring to get this going and ready to go by spring. But Matt has already finished his and got it up and flying. Yep. And uh, of course, yeah, we're going to see right his now. part one build thread on that. Let's see what he says. Oh. There he is. Holy moly. Perfect timing, man. I'm sorry. Um, the one time that it counts, my internet goes down. Wow. So I apologize for that. Well, hopefully, it'll stay up and running. I just blame Comcast. So, Matt, you're supposed to now tell us all the juicy details on this sub point five five FAA legal FPV wing of the future. Oh, man. Uh, where to begin? FAA legal. That's sort of an oxymoron, isn't it? Um, so, anyway, here we go. Here is the flying wing that weighs under 249 grams. It's actually 200 and 31 grams ready to fly. Awesome. And this baby has everything. Full GPS, return to home arrow, or direction to home arrow, Dragon Link antenna, uh, five, 600 milliwatt ready-made RC cricket. Uh, we have a 520 line um, micro camera that I made on a little 3D mount here. This is from a, my 3D printer. And I made it today, and it is fast. And this is the Let's see. Uh, it's a six That's by five point five prop, and you have a little ten amp ESC. And did you buy got, their power pack? Yes, this is the power pack no ready made RC. So it's a cool. uh, ready made RC MS composite mini Swift twenty one point five inch wingspan with their optional power pack. And I apologize for the wiring, as you can see. I am a neat freak when it comes to wiring, and just for the sake of getting this thing up and running. I had to mm -hmm. just sit it all on top. So this little guy here, this is a Minim OSD Micro and way out here on the wing is an Eagle Tree um, V4 GPS that I stole from an old Eagle Tree logger. <laughs> that was it looks like it's part of the color scheme. It actually yeah. fits. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? So I flew it today, and I must say it was almost a mistake to fly this today because the wind is blowing 20 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. So I've never trimmed it. I knew I had the CG right. I never trimmed it. Uh, I'd never flown it. Flew it with a very stiff 20-mile-per-hour headwind. It's 38 degrees. It was Did you line of sight it, or were you in the goggles? Complete line of sight just to get it trimmed out, just to get mm -hmm. it going. And it uh, it flew extremely well. The the I um, DVR'd it on the ready-made RC DVR 1000, and there was not one bit of static. The RSSI read 100% the entire time, and I just kept it in line of sight. So just to know that it works, and it was fast. Like it literally flew all the way from one end of the field to the other in a few nice. seconds. So I mean, and, and did granted, you have I had goggles a, at all. I didn't. I didn't look in them, but I but I looked at the at the at the post flight. It was too much to handle. The wind was too much. It yeah. literally would. It threw it over upside down a couple of times when I was turning um, into the wind, and a gust would throw it over upside down. So mm -hmm. it's impossible. I mean, you can't fly this thing at any point except for like dusk, dawn, 
indoors if you can, and um, just low wind, like a low breeze, because right. anything above that, it doesn't weigh anything. I mean, it's literally nothing. Mm -hmm. So, well, I'm curious to see what the footage looks like. I, I, I think I'm going to get one too for you know all of us to have it, Seth and Joe Nall and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to see if it, if there's a wag from the first person view perspective or how smooth it is, you know, while flying. I won't know how it was awful wag today, be, and mm -hmm. it was so bumpy it was like a roller coaster. Because how much, of, how much wind was it? It was about twenty miles an hour. Oh well, yeah, man. Well, I, I remember I called you earlier and I said I'm scrubbing the I'm scrubbing the test flight. It's twenty mile an hour wind. It's going to snow here soon. It's blizzard conditions almost. <laughs> and then I went out to go get some lunch and I threw it in the truck. Just and by the way, you can literally throw it on the front seat. So yeah. I, I put it. I put it in the truck and uh, went to the gas station. Then went uh, dropped by Taco Bell, got me a uh, cheesy gordita crunch. And uh, on the way home, I said, "I'm stopping at the little ball field, and I think I'm going to just go ahead and throw it." So there was one lady there walking her wiener dog, and she came up to me and she's like, "Oh, that's a neat." You know what she said? That's a neat model airplane you have there. And I was like, right. nice. "Thank you. <laughs> it's not a drone." Did you hug her? And no, I didn't know her that well. Um, and, uh, and plus her dog looked like it would bite me. So I um, just launched it, and, you know, you throw it just like a pizza. You throw it just like this. Just go three-quarter throttle and whoop, let it go, and it flew excellent. Now, here's the best part. Here, This is where I was really concerned because you can do e-calc, and you can do all the, the ideas about what you think the flight time is going to be given, but you never really know. Right, you, there's just too many variables. So this is a 3s 0.95 with um, of one amp. So it's a uh, amp hour. So it's a mm -hmm. um, basically one, mil. yeah, 1,000 milliamp basically pack. Um, this is a little Turnigy Nanotech, and I flew for eight minutes, almost wide open throttle, just so I could penetrate the wind and, and keep it up. I had little varying throttle, but most of it was wide open throttle for almost eight minutes. And when I landed, I hooked it up to the cell checker that gives a percentage. The battery pack was at 77% of a full charge. So if that wow. says anything, I could easily pull a 30-minute flight. That's easily cool. 30-minute yeah. flight out of this plane without going full throttle. It's a four cell one thousand. Is that what Not you said? Three cell one thousand, and it no. it costs ten dollars. The pack is ten dollars from nice. Hobby King. You could fly all day for like nothing. Mm -hmm. yep. And for all you guys that are watching, I can't say enough about filters. I I seem to preach a lot about the use of filters and stuff like that. And um, is that feedback me or you? Anybody? I don't hear it. I'm not getting it. Okay, cool. All right. So, got a little toroid filter here uh, that is coming off of the uh, camera, and also got another toroid filter here right in front of the VTX. Back here, let's see if I can do my best. It's hard. It's, everything's reversed when I'm looking. Yeah. <laughs> right here is the uh, ready-made RC uh, 0.7 of an amp power filter. So, everything in this has got clean power. Now, the only no-no that I did was I routed, as you can see, I routed the um, VTX line along with some of the power lines, and that's a big no-no. You only yeah. want to really, you want to keep your VTX um, uh, signal wires only crossing at 90 degrees from your power wires. However, I had to do it here just for the sake of it, and it worked out well. So, the, I mean, the, the signal was wonderful. So. Nice. So... Do Jason and I need to run out right now and start building ours? Yeah, go ahead and order it. Um, go ahead and get you one with the power pack, and I would go ahead and I would definitely recommend that um, 950 milliamp three cell nanotech from Turnigy. Um, and however you want to power. Now I used the Dragon Link, right? Do you know with all the FAA fun stuff and everyone saying you can't go outside a line of sight? This is a case. This this rig right here for all you people that like to use Dragon Link and and we'll just leave that out there. This this rig is is probably capable of a of a couple of miles of distance out and back. But um, it's so little, you wouldn't go that far, right? 
Oh, I don't know, brother. Well, I mean, <laughs> Matt might. You know, on uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be legal, Matt. Yeah, it wouldn't, would it? You know, I did a lot of uh, questionable stuff growing up, so maybe uh, I didn't do a lot of questionable stuff growing up. I was just living the dream, brother. <laughs> All right, living, right. Don't living incriminate dream. yourself here, yeah, man. Yeah, you know, I'm not. I'm not. But anyway, what my point is is that you don't need to use a Dragon Link. You don't need to use a 433 megahertz long range system on it. Even though it's capable of going a few miles, even the video, I guarantee that video would, would go out a few miles, even on 5.8, because I got some good antennas. But um, Yeah, I, I'm going like super basic on mine. Yeah, so you can go Spectrum 2.4. Um, in fact, I just wanted to show you guys what I have here. Um, this is the AR636 receiver. There oh, yeah. we go. So this baby has AS3X technology, and it is basically a three-axis MEMS gyro stabilizer. So if you put this on the wing, which I'm thinking about doing a follow-up review where I put the Spectrum system on my tried-and-true uh, DX9 over there. So if I put this little bad boy on there, I will have full stabilization. I mean, it will... Yeah. It'll fight that wind and actually, you guys know, anybody that's used AS3X knows that it's a, a great stabilization system. You can tune the, how much uh, input you, you want in it. I think that would be great for this little wing. So oh, it's going to help, it. yeah, especially when it's windy. It's, yep. it's perfect on the UMX micro stuff that they put out, you know, for just making it super stable and solid. Absolutely. I can't, I can't wait to see you fly it in some, like, 2 to 5 or two yeah. to 7. Well, the problem is is that I've just looked at the forecast and I've got 20 mile an hour wind and snow for the next week and a half. So oh this is what this is what uh, late January, early February in Cleveland, Ohio looks like. You want to yeah. hear what we're sitting at tomorrow? Hmm. Want to hear what we're sitting at tomorrow? Yeah, let me hear it. Jim and I, Jim and I are going to the field tomorrow to get some uh, review stuff done. I'll talk about my thing in a minute, but uh, winds light and variable. Oh, I hate you. I but hate what's you the temperature? Guys. Did you say the temp? Well, it's temp's only forty-five, but that's uh, that's warm. That's that's flip flop. Sixty-four degrees, man. Forty-five is flip flop weather up here, brother. I'm going out flying Saturday too. Sixty-four. It's going to be awesome. Mm. Can we tell them what you're flying tomorrow, Jason? Oh, we can. You yeah. ready for that? Yeah, let's. I'm ready for it. So we'll kind of do like a little. Well, that, that is a tasty transmitter, man. It is a cool transmitter, and my favorite part... So everything, that's one of the things I'm going to talk about in the review is it really feels good in your hands. Um, the buttons are, like, easy access. It feels, like, just really nice quality. It lights up. It does all the stuff. But you pull the top open, and then there's a iPhone, you know, or phone mount. You can mount an iPhone or Android phone, but so to get all your uh, flight data and maps and live FPV view to your phone for this thing. And the thing that we're talking about is the Zero Explorer. Mm -hmm. So we got this from the folks at Hobbyco for review. This is the GoPro gimbal version, obviously. And uh, this well, thing... Let me interrupt you. Matt, are you seeing his video? I am. Can you see it? No, I'm not seeing it, but that's, as long as you're seeing it, it's cool. Yeah, Weird. click click on his um at da in the down square. If you click on that yeah. and go back, it'll pop up. Oh, yep, there you go. Uh -huh. There you go. Sorry, guys. So anyway, this thing is it's supposed to fly for like 25 minutes. It's got a giant like 5200 milliamp hour three cell lipo, and everything about it is just really well designed and cool. So the battery slips in, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but let's see if I can get the light on it just right. Maybe not. Anyway, there's yeah, you can probably sort of see it right there. There's a little a, lock, and if that lock, that little button is not in the down locked position for the battery, it won't allow the copter to arm and take off. And that's like a 30-minute battery, right? It's like a 25-minute battery. Um, the gimbal is really cool, so if you just wanted to fly this sport mode or switch it to, they've got an integrated 1080p camera that you can get for it. There's a little tab here, so I can pull this tab, and then the gimbal just completely separates in two seconds. So now I could fold these gear up and make it into a sport quad for fun or I can you know pull the props off it's the self-locking props kinda like the Phantom you know, style but they, they're self-locking they just spin off you don't need any tools or anything so you can pop those off in two seconds 
and then pack this up in a little bitty case or a backpack. Um, so uber cool for that. It's got lights on the bottom. You can actually adjust the intensity of the lights on the transmitter. There's a little scroll wheel, and it'll allow you to turn them off or make them brighter. just depends on what you're filming. Sometimes if you film at night with a bunch of big lights on the bottom, it can mess up the coloring on the image and, and you know ruin your footage. So, but, so we're excited. I'm going to test this out. It's got some really cool features that I'm anxious to try out. So it's got, obviously, like, follow me modes pretty popular where it'll, you know, whoever's holding the transmitter, it'll chase you around. But <laughs> the one I really am interested in testing, it has another follow mode where you can select an object on the live FPV screen on your phone through the app, and it'll follow that object optically. Oh, that's good. Tra that's real tracking, man. Real tracking. So I can. Yeah. I'm standing on the side with my transmitter, watching the footage, and then I'm gonna get Jim or somebody or something, and I'm gonna highlight that object on the map, and then say track it, and then they'll take off, and then the zero drone will chase them around. Uh, optically, that, I don't understand. It's optic. So yeah. visually, what it locks in on their face, right? Yeah, yeah. Just you know how like you can have face tracking on cameras yeah, like and smile pictures and all this stuff. So it's that's kind of frightening. Pretty cool. I've been stuff, trying to so. do that for years. Um, I mean, it's it, it it's already been done, but I was trying to do that for years with an Ardu pilot to to do that style of tracking. Yeah, and that's really cool. So as long as it stays within that camera picture and it can differentiate between the contrast of whatever this object is. Like, if it goes behind trees, obviously, it would lose it. But that's pretty darn cool, man. Pretty cool. And I hey, like do the, the size. legs get in the way? The legs don't show up in the image. Um, you can get the, the booms in the shot on a fast-forward flight if you're running the wide-angle view on the GoPro. But you can, you know, go narrow or medium if you're running 1080. Um then you can kind of, you know, hunker down that, that frame, that field of view there. Or I don't think it shows up at all on the 1080 camera version. Um, so I think one of the cool things is I'm going to be writing this review. I've got it started. got a lot of it done already. I've got to do the test flights and, you know, check out all the features and, and make sure I get good and comfortable with that so I can talk about it well and, and uh, see what works or doesn't work or how well it does. But uh, one of the cool things is uh, Hobbyco is offered the 1080p camera version, the integrated all-in-one ready-to-fly system as a contest. So we're going to be uh, posting up a contest alongside the review and giving one of these things away for free. So we'll have more details on that in the next week or two when the review goes live. Nice. So awesome. That's pretty awesome. Heck yeah. Jim, what do you got going on? I got a pretty cool thing. So I was saying that I uh, am a DX18 guy, but I have the old DX18. I've had it forever. And then, Matt, I'm going to get you to chime in here in a second. But, uh, Matt, I keep stopping because, well, I'm not, it doesn't matter. I Which just stopped presenting myself, so oh. it's between everybody else's videos now. New technology, so we're, just bear <laughs> with us. Um, but anyway, so I'm a DX18 guy, but then all these new radios started coming out, and Jason had the jetty, and it was talking to him, and I was starting to get upset about it, and so I have a new transmitter. Mm -hmm. You can't see the case because it's black. <laughs> <laughs> Drum roll? No. That's a hot rod right there. Oh, maybe I should yeah. pinstripe this thing. Hey. <laughs> so it's a DX9. And it's the black edition. And uh, here it is. Nice. Super sexy. Are you going to hit the present button? So let me present now. All right. So yeah, it looks here. a lot better than the first versions. And then on the back, it's got an MP3 out and a trainer cord. But it also has a Bluetooth. So the cool thing is I'm fairly certain now with my DX18, I can use this as a trainer or my DX18 as a trainer. Mm-hmm talk to each other wirelessly but uh, the biggest sell I think on this new and then I guess we'll talk about the other one here in a minute but the biggest sell is let me try this again Warning, high. Where's oh. that coming from? I hear it I talking. Talking. So, so it has talking so uh, I just quickly so let's say uh, I'm me and I'm flying FPV and I have three modes on my quad 
I have to tell you, it is always a pain to make to look down and go, "Am I here? Am I here?" And mm -hmm. so now you can take any switch, and there's 300 commands, and uh, you can put these on any switch. You can do it just about, I think, any way you want. Uh, a stick. And, anyway, let, let me give you an example. So, okay, hold on. So now I'm in ther thermal mode. That's Nicole Kidman. <laughs> she does live down the street. Let me out of the car, Cole. Let me out of the car, Cole. Uh, where's this audio coming from? Oh, here it is. <clears throat> yeah. Thermal mode. So there's thermal mode. Knife edge mode. So that's when I'm thermally and I need a knife edge. I go straight to that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you flying? <laughs> that can thermal and knife edge. Uh, you don't know what's happening. That's uh, We'll talk about that on the next RC Groups Live Hangout. Okay. Here's another one. I'm just flipping the switch down. So if I had telemetry on it, I could flip a switch. Uh -huh. or maybe maybe I put it on a button, and then uh, I would know how fast I'm going. Then I got some over here. Hold on. Okay, it's this. Stunt one. I have five minutes, and I gotta go. <laughs> What's she say? Spoilers. 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 Boilers. I thought she said boilers. So one article I'm going to do on this thing is you can put any voice you want on here. Uh -huh. Are you going to make it go, hot damn, hot you damn. got a land, son? I think when I turn it on, in honor of Chris Henson, it should say, whoop -bow. Yeah, Yeah, when you go in full fact, throttle. <laughs> I remember when Azar, you guys remember Azar, yeah. yes. R.I.P. Azar? When he first got a talking radio, he would turn it on, and it'd say, ooh, baby, you turned me on. <laughs> Awkward. You know what I should do is collect audio as I go to events, and uh, I could have Chris Henson be the whoopa, and then there I could go. get Miss Ashley to say something, and I could have ZB say something I would never understand. Who's got the best voice out there, though? Who's got the most buttery smooth voice? Bob Sadler is the mouth of the South. I could have Bob Sadler on here. Yeah. So that's one of the articles I'm going to do is, does the DX9 light up? No, hey, we man. should get we should get FT Ashley to record a bunch of those sayings and put those files up as downloads so people can add them to the radio. I think you're right. Yeah. I think we that should. That would be awesome. I, I think really... when you turn it off, it should say, "Hey, where are you going, city boy?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, there's a snake this. in my boot. <laughs> so, Matt, uh, you have been Jr. What have you been for the last few years? Don't Goodbye. ever, don't ever say that to me again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I am Futaba. JR. Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm sliding over here to get something here. I've got to show you guys what I got. <sighs> okay, I'm back. So, um, I'm a Futaba fan all the way across the board. I've I started off. My very first transmitter was an old school analog, um, high tech transmitter, and we're talking in the 90s and stuff. And then finally went to Futaba and. Then, out of nowhere, I decided I was just going to switch brands and go to the dark side. So, there you go. That's my DX9. Yes. Boom. Yeah. Oh, it's Jimmy new. Should stop presenting. Yes, I'm going to present now. Sorry. Oh, you can't see me? There you are. We can, can see, see at the bottom. Yeah. All right. So, there we go. Yeah, there's my DX9. So, I, and of course, mine has the same awesome sounds. Let's see if it'll tell me that. Can you guys hear this? Let's see. Whoops. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> Is it saying anything? She sounds yeah. hideous. She, well, she's a computer transmitter, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going uh, to interrupt you. Uh, anybody watching the TV show? Oh, my gosh. It's about the murder mystery up north where everyone talks like this, you know? No, oh, you know. I don't know. What are you talking about? Oh, it's a TV show. Everybody's watching it right now. What? It's uh, true Mythbusters. Story. No. Mythbusters. <laughs> anyway, the girl in the commercial, in the insurance company com commercial, who says, uh, "Well, she sounds hideous." I realize she's the star of the show I've been watching. Oh, really? Like, who is this girl? I'll find it. Anyway, I'm sorry I interrupted. Go ahead. No, it's good. It's good, brother. Um, so, yeah, I can't say that I'm going to fully just I, – I, I can't drop Futaba. I have too many receivers invested, too many transmitters. Oh, there's nothing wrong with having both. Yeah, but this is going to become an integral part of my flying lifestyle, and I'm going to start off with my very first usage of this is going to be at – 
eFest, Hobby Co's eFest coming up. I will, um, although it doesn't make sense to, to <laughs> use the spectrum at Hobby Co's eFest. That's just the first real time that I can use this guy. Hey, Horizon will be there too. Yeah, they'll be there too. So I'm going to, I'm going to when I get there, I, the first thing I'm going to do is buy a UMX uh, glider, one of the because I've been wanting one for so long, the little UMX Radian. Jason has yeah, one, of course. Yeah, and I'm going to use this bad FPV boy right version. here. FPV version. Yeah, that's and I've I've got the little FPV um, uh, 10 milliwatt or t whatever the little tiny one, the the VA 1100. Mm -hmm. So I'll just use this guy here to fly with it, and I'm excited. Uh, this is my first Spectrum unit. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna make it say anything special? Um, I just I like listening to Nicole Kidman, you know. <laughs> In well, fact, she doesn't say. She says data. She doesn't say data. Data. Right. If you get frosty, you can download. There's some like online services that you can type whatever you want, and then it'll uh, you know speak it, and you can record it as a WAV file, and then mm -hmm. you know you got to set up your use an Audacity or some kind of audio program to to get the settings correctly. But then you can just upload it. I don't know if it's through the USB card or Bluetooth or what, but you can. Get it on the radio and well, that's make what's it whatever happen. you want. Yeah, I'm, I think I can record some voices into it and and do something here. I'm excited. This is a first for me. This is new ground. Is it's always great. cool to get something you're excited about too. Fun yeah. stuff. And I fly them all except for JR. Nothing against the JR people. Seriously, I just haven't gone there. I've got high tech transmitters. I've got Futaba, uh, the Tyrannus. Uh, I've got. Um, I think I've had everything except Airtronics. Yeah, yeah, JR Airtronics. I've, I've had them all, so. So, anyway, there you go. Yeah. What do you think about this new DX20 that came out? I think that <laughs> I should have saved my money and got the DX20. <laughs> I, I wonder, I wonder how sweaty your palms are going to be on those leather side... Did you see you those know, things, man? They had to slaughter two cows to get that thing wrapped. <laughs> are they really leather? It's, it's, it's leather. It's real leather, genuine leather. Because if it is real leather, I'd pull them off and hand tool my own dang leather. Now they are, they are removable, so you can do that. Yeah. You can make your own. I'm going to have to look at that. I thought about creating a hand-tooled leather case for this thing. Mm -hmm. That'd be nuts. kind of cool. But it's yeah, it would be something you'd need to do. Has, has anybody seen your hand-tooled leather awesomeness yet? Did you, do you have anything sitting right there you can I show? I have my latest holster sitting over here. One second. Hot damn, son. There Booyah. He He's going to get a holster. This is the play-by-play. -play. Jim now walked off screen. There's the beautiful <laughs> axial. Just so I don't feel there. left out, here's my DX9. Oh, yeah. One of the originals, baby. Is that a Wraith he's got back there, that axial? Uh, it's, it's one of the axial ones. He's got a couple of them. We did that FPV truck. Um racing segment on our video podcast a while back, a couple years ago mm -hmm. with those. Uh oh, he's come back with a with a bone handled knife and is sad. What do you got there, bud? Alright, so the very short story, because this is an RC podcast, is that uh, I, I tend to jump from hobby to hobby. So my last hobby, other than RC is always going, um, was building guitars and I started building amps and uh, I'm from Texas, and I've always had gun belts and belt belts and hand-tooled leather, and I always, as, even as a kid, thought I want to be a hand-tooled leather guy. So I'm in Mexico last June, and I told my wife I'm going to start tooling leather, and she was like, okay, honey. And I'm like, no, I'm going to like... Sure. I, don't, I didn't even argue with her because I knew that no one would understand what I was actually saying, which is I want to be one of the best hand-tooled leather guys around. And then give me five years, and let's see. So like, this is, uh, this is kind of what I do now. This is called. This is called the Texan. Is that and, clapping? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Jesus God, that's beautiful. Okay, so there everything you everything you see here is hand cut and uh, hand stitched, and I drew out the design. And then everyone wants to know how you tool it, and you tool it by getting the leather wet. You cut it with a knife, and then you stamp all everything you see here is a stamp. And then I'll show you one more I just finished. This is an, a duplicate of Jesse James' holster that he was carrying. Well, he, was, he didn't have it on him, but it, the day he was shot, this is 
the holster that uh, he had on. Nice. So. Is the trigger not supposed to be covered on those? No. no. Oh my! Are you joking with me, right? Are you joking with me? <laughs> I don't think he's joking. Are you joking? Jacob? I'm not joking. Every holster I've ever seen has a we trigger. We just covered. had this conversation. Yeah, it's a single action, so it doesn't. Uh, uh, all these doesn't people matter. are like, "Can you cover you the trigger?" And I'm like, "It's a single action. <laughs> Nothing can happen." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the so best. What? I was gonna say something, Jason. Just did. that was pretty good. <laughs> I thought, I you, were, I thought you guys already <laughs> talked about that. Then I, I adopted the Billy Hell name because I thought if you're gonna wear a piece of leather like this for reenactment or whatever, what do you want it to say, Billy Hell, on there somewhere? That's a hot commodity. Are you selling these things? Um, uh, so I did have a request on this one uh, from actually Lane Starr's dad. Mm -hmm. who uh, was at Seth last year. He's like, I need a pair of holsters. And I'm like, if it were me, I'd make another one of these for you. And then this, I don't know, am I breaking a rule here? No, you're this? good, brother. It's okay. This belonged to a Texas Ranger. Uh, he was a friend of mine when I was a little kid, and I was a Paul Bear at his funeral when he died. He chased Pancho Villa. Um, he was around during Prohibition days, and he bought this pistol the day he became a Texas Ranger. So that is indeed gold plating. Ivory grips. We're gonna, mm -hmm. we're gonna. I'm gonna stop talking about this in a second. But there was an elephant at a circus that went mad, and it was r r in town killing people. <laughs> and my friend Rufus was the only guy with an elephant gun, and they said, uh, "Come kill this elephant." So that's where these grips came from. From that mad. Get out! There's a new story on that gun every time we talk about it. I know it. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna relinquish control of the video screen here. So I wonder if there is a timer on this thing, so we can see how long we've spoken. One of the goals is to take every month we take the weekly uh, live broadcast and jam them all together into a audio podcast. Mm -hmm. It's so, been about 42 minutes so far. You guys keep talking. One moment. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. So Matt, I'm sure you'll be excited about this. Uh, this is the. Wait, let me see your... Upside down. Oh, there it is. Connex, is that the, that's, is... that's the size of the Connex Mini. You so know, this is HD, full HD video well, transmitter. Well, it's fairly lightweight, um, but zero latency. You can hook a GoPro up to it or any other <laughs> HD camera. Oh, 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 it. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> hey, bro. Oh, man. Let me drop my DX9. Hold on. <laughs> You just can't write stuff like that. You can't make stuff like that up. That anyway, cool. when it's not dropping on the ground, you hook it up to your quad or your airplane, and it's pretty stinking awesome. I think the future of FPV is going to be in high definition, so this is one step. It's still 1200 bucks, so it's kind of pricey for hobbyists, but for professional use, this thing's great. So what's your camera out? Uh, GoPro? Uh, you can use a GoPro. You can use uh, you know, any... If you're using it on a like a... S800 or S900 or something, you can use any, whatever camera, you know, Sony, Panasonic, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, my test flights, I had a GoPro connected, and I actually put this on my uh, powered paraglider. I strapped the GoPro in front of Woody. Um, nice. And attached this to it and had the antennas hanging down off the sides of the cage. So and, uh, traditional traditional right. FPV. What, yeah. What do you think? It would work for on an airplane. Oh, it will certainly work. I used the full size Connex on my Ranger, mm -hmm. and it was awesome. I remember What's that uh, review. That did. This one's twelve hundred bucks. Oh my! God. So it's it's high. This is it's still aimed for professional aerial videography kind of situations, um, but you know the size is getting smaller. It's about half the size as the original Connex. It it the you know one of the things about that is it's about half the range too. So you get five hundred meters. So why? So, I'm in sorry, my test flight, I went to 400 meters. Yeah. And I was like, I was flying line of sight as well as watching. I, I put the uh, downlink onto a monitor, a big 13 inch monitor I've got. So I wasn't like flying FPV, but yeah. I was kind of monitoring it, you know, watching the, the downlink and then also line of sight. And 400 meters away was a daggum long ways away. 1,300 feet. For this thing, and I was like, "This is. I don't know that I want to go out any farther and test it. I might not be able to get back if it cuts out after 500 meters." But I fully expect it to go that and beyond, even because it's a software limit um, as well. So once you get past that, it'll basically tell you to, you're going to you run serious? out of video How's... soon, so turn around and come back. And what's how is it GPS that tells the distance, or it's how does GPS. it know? It's something to do with them measuring the uh, signal. 
back That's and forth. That's interesting that they limit it's that. Pretty darn accurate. When I was testing out the original Connex for the review, uh, we were monitoring the uh, NASA, the D, or the A2 from DJI. It's distance away, horizontal distance away versus the OSD on the Connex system, and they were matching up within a couple of mm. meters. I mean, it was pretty dang accurate. So, and what trans- this thing's what awesome. does it transmit on? This is it's like 5.8. There's a few different you know digital channels that it can scan through and find, but it's, it's a digital you know HD transmission. It's it's 720p, um, but it is you know that is HD and it's 500 meters solid. So, so here's a question: If you were to use or if you could use uh, some good antennas, some some circular polarized or linear linear polarized long range or long range antennas such as the Ivy Crazy stuff and maybe a, a patch. Uh, if the software wasn't works. limiting, you could send it on out just you like can, yeah. And I well, it, it is it is yeah. The software is the is the hard limit there on what you can do. But I do run a linear and a patch high gain patch on my receiver on the full size Connex um, to get better because I just don't like the dipoles. The mm, linear. Yeah. So <laughs> having those on there just it helps the signal uh, have a have a better, higher quality signal strength coming in, in in different kinds of situations where the antennas on the transmitter might be blocked or obscured or something. So a little bit better signal penetration with those different antennas, and those are all possible because they just use standard RP SMAs mm-hmm. on the receiver side. And the the original Connex has those micro uh, antenna connections. Where the mini that. now has the the regular RP SMAs. It so looks that's like they're learning. Changed. Yeah, so that, it makes it easier. So you can put standard antennas on here if you wanted, much easier than you could with the full size system. Anyway, nice. I have one thing before we get out of here, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll talk about this. It was just released from Horizon at Nuremberg today. It's probably they're on the floor talking about it. But this is the cam. This is what I showed earlier in the in the live hangout. So this is a let me get it right. This is a waterproof 25 milliwatt 5.8 video transmitter and camera with race band. And a couple of things. It is powered off of this. I'm assuming I could plug this into my receiver, or I could probably reconnect it and just put a battery to it. And then the other thing I'm noticing here is that it's got this soft button on the back mm-hmm. so you can change channels with this thing. Mm-hmm. Integrated camera, protective outer shell. I've actually seen this with the shell off, so if you wanted to shed some weight, you could pull this off, but then it would be uh, you know, exposed. The great thing is it's little, it's I don't know the weight. It I was might, actually yeah. I was gonna go weigh it on my scale. But I like that the antenna's built into it so you're not running two separate units. Right. Mm-hmm. It says it has great image clarity in all lighting conditions. It's uh, uh, 20, is it the, the 25 milliwatt? Yeah, 25 yeah. milliwatt. It requires a 2 or 3S LiPo. That's awesome because that's just about anything you'd run on. Um, I want one. You I can have also, a VA 1100. I need to get rid of that thing. Yeah, this is a new version of that. and that You can remote channel select through your receiver aux port, so that's mm-hmm. pretty awesome. Ooh. And uh, it's, It installs in seconds, and we did ask them. We were like, well, what do we do? And they say just Velcro it. And I have Velcroed things to things, but we know that when you do that, that's not a hard mount. Mm-hmm. So if I were yeah, I was thinking it would be a good opportunity for a, a clever 3D printer to make a integrated mount that it will kind of snap and lock into. Or just – it could just well, slide into it. It doesn't look like it's very uh, – I mean, I, I give them – I'll give them credit where credit's due. That is a nice little piece of equipment, and I'm sure it's got some great range. I don't think they thought out the mounting option of it yeah. very well. Yeah. That's what well, I was it thinking. Would, it would have to sit in a thing that could stab into foam, or you could double yes. stick it onto your quad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the cost on this guy, and it's going to sound high, the cost is $114.99, but uh, I broke mine, but I had a little micro tiny unit that I was putting on Dromedas, little micro quads, and that thing was a hundred bucks, and that was yeah. handmade. That's so. what I paid for the VA eleven hundred, and now it makes me wince <laughs> when I think about that. I just paid ninety nine dollars for that ten milliwatt VA eleven hundred. Right. Yep. Back well, in this, two years, a year and a half ago. Yeah, and this is still pre order, so I doubt that these units are sitting on a shelf. But you heard it first, right here. Okay, when I get to Ooh. E-Fest, I'm going straight over, after I talk to all the Habakkuk <laughs> people, I'm going straight over to the Spectrum 
or the 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 Horizon booth, and I'm going to say, give me one of those to fly around for a few. Hours. Dude, you need to try out the new uh, goggles they put out too. They, I they've saw got those. a diversity uh, set that they've uh, partnered with. Was it Fat Shark? I guess that is. Yeah, yes. they yep. partnered with the Shark. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I guess what we ha we have not done is we need to get all these stories up and out on RC groups because they're sitting here ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, they also had a cool Jason. We have one. It's in my bag. Hold on. The receiver. I've got it right here. Yeah. What do you guys have? It's that new Jim's presenting, so you might not be able to see it unless he's going to pull it out. But it's that yeah. new uh, Spectrum DSMX receiver with auto bind and. Oh, okay, look so, at that! So check it out, Matt. Um, on my already made RC mud skipper, mud they, they had a satellite import. So I instead remember. of running a receiver, you bind the receiver with the satellite on it, then you pull the receiver off, or I'm sorry, you unplug the satellite and then plug the satellite into the port on the mud skipper. Yeah, PPM, right? Yeah, I was like, that's not right. That's black <laughs> magic, right? <laughs> and Jason's like, no, it works. And I'm it like, works. there's no way. This, and it, it, it did work. So this is that, only this is smarter and better. So okay. Now, it has diversity. I don't. I guess what they're saying, Jason, is I don't have to use a receiver to bind it. No, it'll, it'll bind. Yeah, it'll 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 power up in bind mode essentially, and and you can bind your radio to it. So when I build my micro wing, this will be the receiver I use. It looks like a pair of bullhorns, like you have mounted up on top of your roof. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking put, of that, put that on the front of the caddy, dude. <laughs> this is specialty of mine. I'll do it for you right now. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll pan up to my bullhorns. There they are. Right there there. they are. And then show the spectrum uh, bullhorns. <laughs> oh, little doggy. Oh, it's getting out of control. Oh, uh, we're rednecks. And, oh, uh, and then we need to stop talking or we're going to have a four-hour long podcast at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. But uh, back there, you see my head play goggles. And I did the story, and people have been ordering their lenses. Mm -hmm. And they're all in the mail right now, so I'm anxious to see if everyone likes theirs as much as I like mine. I mm -hmm. we'll find out soon enough, won't we? Hey, don't you have an extra set? Bring them with you when we go to. I want to try them out when we. Go I'm bringing to, them everywhere I go. Oh, I love it. When we okay. went to uh, to visit Havico, Frank was like, "Hey, you guys want to go fly?" And I'm like, "I look out that the window." Just like Frank too. It's raining. <laughs> It's raining, hey, right. and it's, it's like 30. And he's like, hey, let's go to the field. And I was like, I guess that's how they do it up here. But we Frank went out, Frank. and he, we flew a little foam uh, plane of his that he FPD'd, and, and, and he had the fat sharks that you have, Matt, mm -hmm. and I've never used before. So first I had uh, some mediocre fat sharks. and it's I like, said, the, like the attitudes or something. Attitude yeah. V3s. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It was old, but it, it was the 30-degree field of view and, and not yeah. great in quality. That but was then the we also had the HDs. Okay, yeah. So I had the the not so great, and he's like, "You want to fly?" And I was like, "No," because <laughs> I'm used to my head plays, right? Right. And so then they put the good fat sharks on me, and then I was like, "Oh, yeah, I'll fly this thing." So yeah, we buddy. literally were flying around in rain and wind and cold weather, and uh, it was awesome playing. I'd buy that airplane right now. What, what was plane it, was it? It was some just simple sport plane. It was like uber basic. They had a gyro stabilization, you know, receiver in it. They don't make and, it anymore. And uh, so, but I mean, it was just kind of a proof of concept that they're looking at to, you know, create some more simple, uh, easy, fun FPV airplane. So we need look, more of that from the for some stuff. Yeah, it's, companies. I told him, I said, Jason and I started, and we went as far to the right as you could of giant FPV complication. Mm-hmm. And I'm all the way back to what Frank had, which was like a 28-inch, 31-inch wingspan foam airplane that can knife edge and land and, mm -hmm. and you know does all the sporty stuff. And I'm like, this is all I really care to have now. That's like me. I have the long-range stuff, huge, complicated uh, Zephyr, uh, Spade, you know, Z3 planes and all sorts of stuff like that. And then I've got the Western Michigan Park Flyer with the VA-1100 on it, and I just go straight into knife edge and have fun with it. So hey fun. guys, this just in, I got an email from Tower Hobby. He says, whoa, free shipping Thursday, January 31st. So free U.S. grand shipping on everything through Sunday the 31st. And, and one more, I've got a Boom. thing. 
uh, put up a thing last night, I guess, on flyinggiants.com, the world's largest and most active giant scale website, and that's no bull. That's not what my point, though. My point is we're giving away a Hobbico uh, escapade. Not, Esca not a, I escapade. Was almost, uh, escalade. Escalade. Is that a Jackson song? I wanted to give away an Escalade, but yeah. <laughs> but we're giving away this you Escapade. Have a good time. Easy, 30, easy. 30, 30 cc gas. <laughs> so go to Flying Giants, and what you have to do is I put up not all, but many of the events we covered on FG this year, and you just kind of pick your favorite photo, post it, and you're entered. And uh, it's super simple, and everybody seems to really enjoy that contest right now. In fact, I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Escapade emails in my box right Boom. now. Boom, so. nice. Thanks, Habico. Thanks, Abby. Abby Jinx rocks. Abby Jinx, y'all. If you see Abby Jinx, you tell her that uh, Billy Hale and Jason Cole and Matt Gunn said hey. Mm -hmm. And to all the viewers out there, if you're watching this after the live feed on YouTube, uh, be sure to hit us up on Thursdays when we're doing this live, and uh, you'll be able to jump into the, the Google uh, system and use the group chat or the Q&A feature to ask us questions. Uh, give us your feedback in real time, and we'd love to uh, have that participation with you, the user. So, and we we stuff. had a little hitch in the get along on that this week, so uh, we're just going to have the video to show. But but uh, every time we do it, we're going to get better at it. Now, also, we want you to subscribe. <laughs> so everybody, point in a direction where the subscribe button could possibly be. Wait, and wait a minute. <laughs> hit the subscribe button. And that way, not only will you find out when we're broadcasting live, it, it'll email you and say, hey, they're broadcasting live. You'll also find out when event videos go up, review videos go up, and anything else we might happen to shoot. Mm -hmm. This is important stuff, y'all. Yeah, y'all. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. right, right. the south anymore. Okay, we have to stop talking now. I want to thank everybody for watching, and be sure to check us out next week on Thursday. Matt Gunn, Jason Cole are always on the Internet and in the airfield trying to keep it right for you guys. Yes? Boom. I was trying to get my spectrum to talk to you guys and I didn't get it to do it. That's what I wanted to do. Here we go. Ready? Uh, here it is. Oh. Okay. We're out of here. Peace, love, and FPV, y'all. I can't get my door. RCgroups.com. Matt Gunn will be back later when his, uh, his uh, <laughs> transmitter actually say something. <laughs> I'm hitting the stop button. One, two, three. I actually have not hit the stop button yet. I'm holding here, man. <laughs> okay. Free spring. And go.